This is Solar PVTV from InterSolar Europe 2016. And we are together in our Solar Business Club uh, panel discussion uh, with the topic Quo Vadis Solar Industry. And we have a very interesting guest actually with us, Matthias Altieri, who is representing the financial community. Bruce Douglas, who is representing the Global Solar Council, but today we are speaking more in private, with uh, Michael uh, Belmer, who is Managing Director of LTI RE Energy, one of the most important inverter suppliers to the market, and uh, with Michael Schmela, hmm, how to present him. The man who needs no introduction, <laughs> a former editor in chief of Photon Magazine, also advisor, executive advisor to Global Solar Council, but uh, most importantly to EPIA, Solar Power Europe, right now. So, welcome, guys. And uh, let's start first, maybe very shortly. What is your opinion about uh, the exhibition? What is your feedback? Maybe I will start uh, first with, uh, with Bruce. Yeah, thanks, Thomas. I mean, uh, my impression of the, the exhibition is actually quite positive. Uh, we've seen uh, in Europe this year the, an increase in installations for the first time uh, in several years. So 2015 showed a 15% increase in installations. And I think you see that reflected in the show, uh, both in the uh, interest and excitement around uh, PV development in Europe, but also what you see is a diversification into other sectors. So you see a lot of the module manufacturers now moving into storage. You also see a lot of the uh, EV uh, car manufacturers also moving to stationary storage. Um, I could name some, but you know, you, you know who I'm talking about. So new players entering the market and, uh, and a lot of excitement, uh, not just in the solar PV sector, but in other sectors. You see the storage hall is growing, uh, and I see a lot of opportunity there, both in Europe, but also further afield. No, this show is very exciting. I mean, a lot of people are talking uh, Europe is uh, dead. I cannot see that. I see the show uh, moving in the right direction. I think there's a very positive atmosphere. This comes from two points. I mean, the one thing is Europe itself, but it's, of course, very much the new markets, which are close to Europe, but definitely new markets. I'm talking definitely about uh, yeah, Middle East, North Africa, not only North Africa, also Central Africa, South Africa. So and this is uh, really what we experience on the show, <coughs> a lot of things really moving forward. Of course, uh, we all know that these projects are taking time. As a more strategic group, uh, we are a little bit relaxed on this when it comes to timing. Yeah? Second thing what I uh, think is uh, really attainable is the uh, emergence of storage as part of a more complete solution, right? A lot of countries which are starting new in solar, they take a very realistic view from our point also to integrate uh, storage components. For us, inverter manufacturer, of course, it's also a good opportunity. Of course, at the end of the day, you talk about DC power, somehow get into the grid and uh, stabilize uh, things, and that's where our technologies are about. So we are very positive. I think what you also see this time is um, that it's actually getting more, even more international again, and you see new players coming to Europe. I think international has established itself simply independent from the market in Europe as simply a meeting place as, as probably one of the, the leading um, international shows and people come here to, to do simply business independent from the market and that what, ha what, what has happened. Yeah, it's true that uh, this show was quite uh, exciting and also the fact that it was connected to EU PVSEC in some way. So we got also quite high level people from the European Commission, from the European Parliament and also leading scientists uh, made it really interesting. And um, let's now focus on our topic, um, Quova, this solar industry. So uh, we experienced such a high growth uh, during the last years. This year. I don't know if you also noticed that, but um, the first half of the year was especially, um, the market was growing, especially in China. Now people, they are becoming a bit more skeptical. We are speaking of, about uh, oversupply, um, quite a lot of, um, especially tier two uh, manufacturers, they are quite becoming quite stressed what will be the future of, of solar. And from your perspective, Koa this, Koa this um, solar industry. And now first I would like to ask uh, Matthias, because uh, this is the guy actually who came from one of the largest companies in the past, actually the largest company, QCells. He was in charge of the largest market in Italy. Then he switched to financing and he has a great overview from both sides, from the industry and also from the financial community. And, uh, you know, without money, we cannot uh, grow the industry. So. Yeah, Thomas, thank you again uh, for being invited. It's always a pleasure to attend your uh, events and shows and uh, interviews. 
Um, yeah, this is not an easy question. However, if I agree with those gentlemen, um, the first time I see uh, last year in Intersola, there was a little bit people were not in a good mood and uh, nobody knew what happened. And, and now I see the first time it's positive. Um, the, the market, as, um, as I think, Michael, you said that the market in Europe is growing the first time after a couple of years. And I, to be honest, I, as a financial investor, I have to rethink my strategy because I was now only focusing on de-stressed assets in Europe, especially in Germany and Italy. So now uh, a new project development, new projects are becoming again um, interesting and uh, still money is cheap whatever cheap means. However, it's not expensive to, to get uh, senior loan debts. Um, looking generally, uh, I think um, Southeast Asia remains a very, very interesting market. So from grid perspective and uh, off grid. And the first time I noticed coming from a component supplier, so starting with sales production, then module, and then a system system business. And in QSales, we call that system business. It's now people, component supplier, they're looking into solutions. They are looking into turnkey solutions. They are providing guarantees to the whole package. And they, they stop thinking in units, and they already started to think in kilowatt hours. And this is, I think, for the industry, a perfect sign. Uh, Michael is uh, rising hand. So, Michael, I'm, I'm not worried at all. So, um, um, the industry is extremely growing. We're at Solar Power Europe are totally positive on that. We we just came out actually with our global mar market outlook here, um, which gives a five-year forecast, and we really upped our numbers and are very positive on the market. And um, you have to see it a little bit in a different way. Um, last year, over 50% of demand came from Japan and China, and it's going more to Asia, that's true. The thing is actually so that if one of the big markets simply has a little cough, that could mean a flu for the industry. But a flu is also, also just a, a temporal thing, right? So maybe Q3 might be a bit tough. But nevertheless, I think Q4 will, will come back strong. Or maybe it's also Q1 2017. But nevertheless, it's going up. It's very positive. Um, the takeaway is simply solar has gotten so cheap, actually, that we are now one of the lowest cost energy generation sources. And I'm not only talking about renewables. We can compete with fossil fuels. We're even cheaper now, you can see that from recent bids actually, than onshore wind. So solar, and I think that's the most important takeaway, is the lowest cost generation source today in many regions of the world. And that's actually why the future is simply very bright. So maybe also Michael, yeah, because uh, you are working quite uh, closely with different markets. Yes, so you have also not only overview of the European market, also of energy markets, and um, you are coming not from module manufacturers but also from BOS, let's say supplier. And in the meantime, we invite Arturo. Come on. <laughs> he just arrived from uh, Mexico. Yeah, I think yes. To the yes, panel discussion. A, a delay on the flight. <laughs> Sorry yes. For that. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for, for, waiting, for waiting so much time. Yes. So, so as we said before, it's it's our <laughs> solar solar business club discussion. So it's not, let's say, so bureaucratic. And it's also very interesting to see Arturo, who who was one of the uh, leading uh, people in uh, Trina Solar, in Ginkgo Solar, and now he's running his company. So always running after the customers now. Eh? Always <laughs> running after the business. <laughs> exactly. So uh, so Arturo, first I would like to give a floor to Michael. Uh, we are now discussing about uh, Quo Vadis, uh, the solar industry. Okay. Let me add uh, on what Michael was saying on the market development, and I very much uh, agree to what you're saying. And um, as a big corporation behind LTI Reenergy, that's a Kerber group, we were looking at these mega trends and we said exactly that, right? So it is already competitive nowadays. It's um, the fastest growing uh, part of the energy mix. and. Um, that's based on mega trends, and if there are a quarter, maybe with oversupply, which I cannot judge, I cannot see it in the inverter business, maybe in the module the suppliers, it's a little bit different. I think it's a temporary thing. So, um, back to Thomas' uh, question: uh, What are we doing differently? We are going in the new markets with localization partners, which are there, and I think localization is really one of the big things you can see in the industry as well, right? 
I mean, a lot of people started in South Africa just uh, coloring the, the boxes, right? Uh, we are talking about a different degree of uh, localization, and I think it's important for the emerging market not only having solar and solar investment, which is great, but also creating workforce and um, doing really a more society shift on this. And this is what we are heavily supporting in our strategy in China, in India, in Brazil, in North America, in Turkey. Let's see about Middle East and uh, South Africa. Maybe I can add to that just before we uh, pass that on. And uh, I fully support Michael's point about this, uh, the, the oversupply, the Q3 issues. It's a temporary issue. And uh, it's the Global Solar Council. We see a lot of growth coming up uh, over the coming years. Um, the mega trend is the cost, the cost reduction, the cost effectiveness of solar. What we need to do, though, is uh, raise awareness with governments uh, and corporates around the world about this, uh, about this uh, incredible trend of uh, cost reduction. And uh, although we know it, sitting on this bench, uh, there's a lot of people out there, both governments in emerging markets and the corporates who want to source renewables who are not aware of it. So as a council, we are doing a lot of work on promoting those facts. Uh, let's uh, give a floor to our uh, late arrival <laughs> guest. So, so Arturo, as we are discussing, yes, so you are at um, biggest companies, Trina, uh, Ginko. Now you are having your own company. Yes? So I think that, uh, the, let's say, the perspective, it's a bit changed. Yeah? And now you are also a bit deeper with the customers. So what is your feeling? Well, my feeling is that I have to pay myself my travel expenses uh, for, for visiting all these countries, especially in emerging markets. But uh, joking apart, uh, I think it's a good challenging, very good opportunity. I think this uh, was the right time to do that. I learned a lot how to build teams, how to understand in the markets. Uh, I think we have been cooperating, all of us in this industry during, uh, in my case, during 16 years to, to see the trends of the industry, the up and downs. We have been seeing the, the cycles and for sure, uh, it will be another cycle down, another cycle up. And always the trend has been positive. And I'm a positive person. I am a firm believer in the industry of solar, uh, in renewal in general. And I'm supporting every kind of uh, market that is understanding the importance of being more renewal oriented and more clean for our new generations. And this is something that we need to transmit. But at the same time, now it's time for investors, and this is why I'm, I'm becoming more, more and more close to the investors, to, to let them know that it's a good, it's a good, it got a good place to, to make money. It's a good, it got a good sector to, to keep uh, supporting, because finally there's a good and better IRR. Why? Because the cost reduction is there. I don't, need, I don't think we need to see much more decline of the solar panels to, to reach grid parity. We are seeing the grid parity in many countries, and we don't need even the feed-in tariff. I think <laughs> today is a very special day because I, I, I was thinking on, uh, since I woke up at 7 in the morning seeing the Brigitte of UK, I was thinking, well, in Europe, the, 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 latest, the latest country that was supporting solar a lot was Britain, right? Now we'll see how it affects the solar industry. But I do believe on the globalization and the united of all countries into one direction. So it's, it's sad to see that uh, Britain is uh, deciding or UK is deciding to be part, a part of the European Union. But at the same time, I do believe that there are many countries entering into the need of diversification of uh, sources, of energy resources in the um, uh, competition with more and more um, any kind of source of energy. So solar is competing uh, with, with wind for sure and with other uh, non-clean uh, energies. Now in many countries we are reaching grid parity. And third, as I was saying before, and I finished the, this, the longest speech, uh, I think investment. Investment is coming, has to come back, has to trust that solar has been here to stay for long, is not way back. And, and we, are, we are delivering projects, so I'm, I'm now uh, providing to my funds projects with returns of IRR over 12, 13, 14 percent leverage. So minimum 9, 10 percent and leverage for 20 years with PPAs or even without PPAs is, is a fact. So we will see that, and I think many other countries will, will push the industry up again. Um, Arturo, uh, just a comment. Um, um, the, the most important thing that we still see at Solar Power Europe, of course, is what are the three Ps? It's policy, policy, and policy. Because energy is always uh, politically driven. It's too important for the countries to leave it 
100% to the markets. It has always been that way and it will always been that way. So that means we need stable framework conditions that apply actually to the new world. So that means we, the solar industry, the wind industry, the whole renewables industry simply needs this framework which needs to be stable and adapted that we with our low um, zero, zero marginal cost um, prices actually can, can really um, excel and actually participate and contribute and actually do our job for society. Um, and that's really important. Huh? And so this needs to, to be done actually. And we're not seeing that in Europe the way um, it should be at the moment. And that's, although Europe has always been a pioneer in solar, that's why we're seeing, okay, at the moment a little uptick, but that was due to the UK and due to a subsidized program, right? So for the next year, actually, we see actually a little slump again in Europe. Only after that, we are positive, but only actually if the framework conditions are set correctly. Let me add, let me add one, one point. Uh, I, I fully, fully agree with you, um, but, but also there is here a, a very important point that we, we shouldn't forget. Uh, there has been a very important meeting in Davos, then a very important meeting in Paris, and I think all the most important uh, countries or economies in this world has been finalizing with an agreement to support the um, reduction of CO2 and with some goals. Better or worse, we are in the right direction. And I think politically, the countries, more and more, they have this tension of supporting so this pressure from even from from uh, green parties uh, in Germany, for example, that are supporting and are pushing the governments to go in the direction on renewable energies. We have in the 26th on on this month we have the elections in Spain. There is chaotic situation also, but but most of the of the parties that are competing there to to see who is going to uh, alliance with whoever, they are now rectifying the law that was. Uh, badly implemented in Spain with the Real Decreto against the renewable energies and, and implementing a, a, a fee on the, like we, we call the Impuesto del Sol, the sunny tax. So they're against now and they're saying to the population, we, we have here the voice of the people and we are going to rectify. So whoever wins, they will have to take it very seriously to support again renewable energies. And I think it's a good sign. Yeah, I, th I think it's a combination of both, right? I mean, uh we are in solar as competitive that we do not need these old feed-in tariff programs anymore in future. At the same time, you need uh, the stable conditions, right? right? And I think this is something we can all agree on. And that's also really, as you're saying, governmental um, job uh, to give the security. Because what we are seeing in the new regions, on the one hand side, is competitive. On the other hand, is, I think uh, you can judge much better than I can. But it's uh, still a, a jump to take a decision, right? I mean, one uh, example, obviously, is Egypt, right? A lot of parties trying to close at this point of time. And uh, yeah, at one point of time, you have to take a decision, and this will be influenced by a government. And I think this is also necessary, but this is not true for solar, but it's true for everything in the world. And uh, yeah, as also a professional organization in our background, we like to have uh, stable conditions and know what we are doing in the countries, and then we are willing also to invest there. And, uh, I mean, one comment on that, this is another mega trend, if you like, the move from um, the feeding tariffs towards tenders. And I think you're seeing that more and more in Europe, but also uh, around the world. Um, you know, and with the, the, the cost effectiveness of solar, you know, that's pushing, that's driving that as well. And I couldn't agree more with, um, with Michael on the, the policy driven. I mean, you know, we, we need those legally binding frameworks, the targets. And uh, you see now in, in Europe, the negotiations this year will be about the renewables directive. Uh, the 27 percent and we as solar power Europe are, uh, are pushing for 35 percent and what's interesting 70 percent why not you know I mean, we, we have to be credible and realistic we think 35 percent is a credible target and the wind industry even they were uh, are only ambitious to, to go to 30 percent and we're happy to do the extra five percent from solar if they if the wind can't do it um, but what you see is uh, the, the policymakers in this post-subsidy world, which we're, we're moving towards, uh, are favouring tenders, and that's, that's a, that we see that as a, as a good move. And on the COP21, although that gives a, a good signal, it's certainly a good signal, the commitments you see from, from the, the countries coming out of that are nowhere near enough. I mean, to, to reach the two degrees, let alone the 1.5 degrees. 
and Irina have estimated uh, with the commitments as they stand, we may reach 4,500 gigawatts by 2050. We need to pull that forward. We need to aggressively pull that forward to 2040, 30, or even, even, even earlier. I think the only way to do that is through uh, very proactive uh, and stable policy frameworks. I think that uh, we discuss about very important elements, PPP, about the importance of the industry. But I think uh, more and more important also becomes age to age, which means like human to human. And uh, that's why also we are here. Yeah? We are meeting around the globe at different events. And at the end of the day, I think it's also about the credibility of the industry, the credibility of the companies, but even more important, the credibility and uh, the liaison uh, between the people. That's why we are here at uh, Solar Business Club discussion. I would like to have uh, feedback uh, from you guys. How do you imagine, let's say, our cooperation and uh, our work together on a more private basis? So, well, the, this question for me is, uh, is difficult to answer because for me, my personal life and my professional life has not been very well separated in the last 20 years. So, so even my friends are from the industry, my family, my parents, they, they come to many exhibitions during the last 10 years. They have been in San Francisco, in LA, in Munich, they have been in Madrid when, when the Spain was strong, in Italy. And also my, my, my ex-girlfriends have been from the industry. So that's, that's a very difficult to separate from that. So, so, be, uh, <laughs> so I should be inviting all of them to the Solar, solar Business Club. But uh, seriously, I think personally people become successful when they put their passion into what they do. And this has been my statement in life. If you are good in surfing and you want to make this your, your job, you can be successful, you can be gaining uh, prizes or even teaching. And I have a good friend that is a teacher. Mm -hmm. He left uh, a business uh, in an office because he was uh, tired and he dedicated his life to teach uh, in Panama, how to surf. And he's making probably more money than during this month I'm doing now. <laughs> so he's, he's really, really enjoying his, his job and, and making money of that. In this industry, if you believe what you do, if you strongly put your passion on this, eventually you will become successful. Of course, it's a lot of hard work, a lot of headaches, especially where are you or who are you choosing to work with. And we are adult enough to decide it who you want to, with, to be with in your professional life. And I choose my friends. I choose my family, I choose my, my girlfriends, and I choose my partners also for business, where finally, if they trust, and it's a question of trust, they can realize, uh, they can rely that if you have been trustful in the last 16 years, you can be trustful for the next 16 years and make business with them. This is my point. Arturo, I, uh, my wife was not from the industry, so uh, <laughs> I was not so lucky than you that she, I, she could travel with me. No, but to be honest, is uh, also Thomas, thanks to you, I, I mean, we are in the business, I'm more than 10 years now in the business. I know Arturo when he uh, was not a big uh, CSO in the company, so we met and uh, we had fun. And you remember that in Solar we had uh, nice parties, nice events. You might remember QCell's parties. They, I mean, that was some really. Don't remember. <laughs> some people they don't remember. But uh, coming back to your question, I mean, I just uh, I have a new uh, colleague in, in in my company, and Johan comes from a completely different business. He is a ex uh, football profi, a soccer profi, and um, he he just asked me, Matthias, you know a lot of people. It seems to be in the family, and think and and he said, oh, that let me feel good. And uh, yeah, H to H, I, I like this uh, abbreviation very much because it, it shows that uh, B to C, C to C, B to B. Mm -hmm. And now we are, I think, a step ahead. And um, I like to work with people. It makes life hard, but also easy because you, you, you save time because you look into the eyes, you know the guy, you know the operation, you know where is he heading to. We understand the business. I mean, I was... a uh, a supplier of models I know what I can how can I negotiate with the guy who who produces components because I know what is important for those companies so it, it makes it easier and much quicker and I like it more
I was in the wind industry for almost 20 years and uh, only joined the, the solar industry, what, about a year ago. So I had uh, no, no knowledge, still limited knowledge. In fact, uh, Michael, uh, as my executive advisor, has helped me on that learning curve, accelerate the learning curve. So I know a little bit about solar now. But I also came with no baggage. You know, and I think the solar industry with the ups and downs and the, the history that you've had uh, has a significant amount of baggage. And so, um, I mean, my day job is with Solar Power Europe uh, to develop solar uh, in this region, but also I've been elected as the chairman of the Global Solar Council. And in that, co that context, yesterday we had our board meeting here in InterSolar. We had 25 different nationalities around the table. And many, when I came into the industry, you know, I, I said, why don't we have a, a global body? And a lot of people said it's not possible. We've tried it. Um, but it's about personalities, it's not about the countries that are around the table, it's about the trust, looking people in the eye and, and being able to, uh, to find common ground and I think that's what we've done. So yesterday's meeting was extremely successful, we, we represent probably 90-95% of the installed capacity around the world and over 2,000 companies now. But it, it's the personalities around the table and I think it's now a family, you know, we are, we are all dedicated towards accelerating the development of solar and it's the people that matter um, and not, not the, uh, the institutions behind it. So I completely agree. We are all spending also quite some time of our life in this industry. It's not a 9 to 5 job for most of us and we are doing it because uh, we are believing in what we are doing and uh, we are believing, and this is essential I think coming from other industries as well, that these projects we are doing uh, need needless to say, all partners' efforts uh, to get it done. And that's what we are seeing in the markets, and that's why, from my understanding, solar is picking up, right? We get the credibility also on the financial uh, investors more and more. We talked about, uh, let's say, politicians who have to, to do also their stuff, yeah? But from a supplier's and financial point of view, I would say this is uh, definitely something uh, which is moving, and it's based on trust, it's based on relationship, it's based on clearly saying, okay, there is a customer value in this, what we are doing and how we are doing it. And I think this works better when you know the people you are negotiating with, with you are dealing with, and also celebrating with. So that's a good thing, and I like uh, this initiative. Uh, when I entered Solar 20 years ago, that was basically my first um, job. So I chose Solar very consciously, so because I, when I learned about renewables during my studies, actually, this was very appealing to me. I saw the potential of Solar, and that's why I went to that. And actually, I want to continue working in that until I retire, and I don't in intend to retire very soon. So that means uh, I, I want to spend all my time here, uh, my working time, and also my private time. So actually, my girlfriend is from Solar, and uh, um, so that means business and private <laughs> works together. And so it's Solar 24-7, basically, so also when the sun doesn't shine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and so that's that's what it is about actually it is it, it was really a working with really nice ambitious people who want to change the world and that's what it is about and that's why I'm happy and want to stay here let me add that uh, I think we should be considered privilege all of us because we are working helping the the next generations we are working for for really a nice thing to change the world in for for better but at the same time, uh, we're enjoying the places where it's sunny, right? So when, when I travel to Mexico, to Panama, or to Colombia, and now there is a tender in Argentina. Uh, oh, true. That's one of the reasons why I joined the solar industry. <laughs> I mean, uh, my last startup was in, off, uh, it was, it was, <laughs> was in off, offshore, offshore operations, uh, 40, 40 kilometers off the, the coast of Ireland. Oh and now I'm, I'm sitting on a beach in Brazil, you know. So, uh, no, we're very lucky, very fortunate. I liked very much uh, what you said, that we are a kind of like a family. And I would like to uh, just ask you, to move a bit, uh, Michael, to move, to move, to move, and invite uh, uh, for the last question our new member of the family, Johan. <laughs> so, so welcome the new member of the Solar family, <laughs> who is coming from the football, uh, professional football player, also former trainer of the Belgian national team under 21. So now the last question is, of course, about the European Championship. So how do you think, guys? We are from different countries. No fight, yeah? Just between friends. Who will be the winner? Uh, I vote for Poland. <laughs> <laughs> I vote for Belgium. <laughs> yeah, Spain, even we did a bad, bad game last time. But Croatia was very strong. I'm from a lucky situation because I'm half German and half uh, Italian. <laughs> so if Italy succeeds, I stay with Italy. 
if uh, Italy will lose against Spain, which might be possible, I don't believe so, but it might be possible, then I still have Germany. And I'm from Britain, so I have a few choices, England, Wales uh, and Northern Ireland, but given the Brexit this morning, I don't even know if we're allowed to play. So, <laughs> so in England, I, Iceland, Iceland may just get a bye and go through. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, difficult uh, groups now for, for Germany on the right side. So, but I think who is managing the quarterfinal on the right side of uh, the tournament will also win uh, the championship. Yeah, I, I, I have some Polish uh, Polish roots, but uh, nevertheless, uh, I was born in Germany. I think that's the time to kind of keep your nationality and and uh, kind of push and believe in, in the country. So I, I think Germany will make it. I would like to really thank you for being here. And it was quite a relaxed panel discussion because, as you said, all of, all of you, we are like Solar friends. We are members of Solar Business Club. And uh, we have also new member of our family. And I would like to really thank you for joining uh, the panel discussion. And uh, we have now just uh, time for family photo, yeah? So thank you so much. Uh, we can see the family.